Hello friends. So today we are going to talk about the nanoparticles, nanomedicine and artificial intelligence and their role in advancing healthcare systems. So I hope you have already uh, listened to the part one of this video where I have talked about the uh, recent most Nobel Prizes which have been uh, awarded in this particular field of nanotechnology and artificial intelligence. I had also mentioned about different kinds of nanomaterials available. Also, uh, how these nanomedicines are developed, which kind of nano platforms are used, what is the difference between uh, traditional and the nano-enabled platforms in terms of uh, drug delivery. And uh, also, I had given a couple of examples about uh, these nanomedicines. Uh, so I covered almost... Uh, everything about nanoparticles and nanomedicine in the first part and how they are being utilized uh, for uh, uh, the advancing the healthcare systems uh, in the first part. So I'm hoping that you might have heard that by now. If not, you should go back and listen to that part uh, first because in this part too, I'm going to specifically focus on the artificial intelligence and its role uh, in advancing the healthcare system. So to uh, quickly uh, go to the uh, artificial intelligence part, you are, you are already aware of the fact that uh, AI is actually revolutionizing the healthcare by introducing advanced technologies. And these technologies actually uh, are enhancing the diagnostics, treatments, and patient care all at the same time uh, simultaneously because most of the time these diagnostics um, or the treatment or the patient care uh, systems go hand in, hand in hand because you need to uh, monitor everything uh, simultaneously while you are taking care of a patient in particular for a specific uh, disease. So AI applications in healthcare systems are obviously diverse, starting from the um, uh, identifying the uh, medical imaging and uh, the uh, processing of that data and finally leading to the uh, personalized medicine for an individual on the basis of all the uh, data analysis and processing which is uh, done using uh, various data analytical tools and uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, simultaneously. So based, all this is done for the significant improvements in accuracy, efficiency, and the patient outcomes because you want your uh, patient outcomes to be better so that uh, at least you can reduce some global burden of these diseases, which are immense in number. I have also talked about the global burden of the diseases in the earlier part of this video. So you can uh, check it out there that um, uh, how much low global burden these diseases are putting upon us and the pharmaceutical companies, they are growing day by day. The market is growing day by day. Lots of pharmaceuticals are getting developed, but Still, we need better uh, diagnostics and better for better pharmaceutics for the treatment of patients. Uh, so, as far as AI healthcare market and numbers is concerned, if you uh, look at uh, this data uh, in two thousand twenty, the global AI healthcare market was somewhere around four point nine billion US dollars. In two thousand twenty one, a lot of startups came, and almost two point five billion US dollars were raised by these. Uh, startups in 2024 this mar market is expected to increase by 45.2 billion us dollars and in 2026 it has to it is expected to increase by almost 45 percent making it to 150 billion us do dollars in healthcare by 2026 <clears throat> so you can understand that how important it is to study uh, these two parallels uh, together which means artificial intelligence and the uh, and the therapeutics. Uh, in this case, we are talking about specifically about the nanotherapeutics or the nanomedicines, and studying them together it becomes really important. Yeah, just by looking at the number, you can understand that recent Nobel prizes have been awarded in uh, for the uh, for the artificial intelligence related work. Uh, and also for the computational modeling of uh, 
uh, 3D structure of protein using the machine learning. So more or less both have been awarded in the field of artificial intelligence or machine learning, making it all the more important. So if I just give you an example of an AI application in healthcare, uh, just uh, let's say we, if we talk about the liver cancer, and how artificial intelligence is playing any role in liver cancer. So starting from the uh, virtual assistants, which patient might, might use in terms of um, identifying the, starting from the uh, doctors or the path labs or uh, to talk to somebody about uh, their symptoms, these virtual assistants in the form of the um, app, different kinds of mobile applications or the uh, even chat GPTs or chatbots, these applications have been utilized, um, utilized uh, variously, utilized by uh, different, uh, even different hospitals or different uh, healthcare professionals nowadays. So this is one example. Then second example, uh, is that the medical image di imaging diagnosis is being done um, using these artificial intelligence related applications. And uh, these medical images uh, are initially collected, segmented, uh, processed, and then analyzed by, uh, by the um, AI professionals. And then they develop certain aids or the, <clears throat> or the tools diagnostic tools which are later later utilized by the healthcare professionals also that is one other uh, another research field uh, which is being utilized uh, for uh, these applications then they can also be used for the adjuvant therapy which means a follow up therapy after a treatment is more or less, uh, more or less is done and then uh, the follow ups have to be uh, taken care of so that can be taken care of by the artificial intelligence. Also, the risk screening, treatment response prediction, and prognosis evaluation, all that can be done computationally using artificial intelligence. And then also, uh, in case uh, better drugs with better uh, efficacies, uh, better um, targeting, and uh, better biodistribution, there are a lot of things which still needs to be improved. So drug development and testing can also be done by utilizing AI applications. And also uh, the post-operative uh, rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation management once the uh, patient is operated for a disease and then after that rehabilitation is done. So there can be different kinds of applications uh, which are AI-based, which can be utilized by um, a patient or a healthcare professional for the betterment of uh, the patient outcomes. So this is one example which I have given to you. There are some other examples, like for example, if we talk about medical imaging, so this can be used for the enhanced diagnostics. Uh, AI algorithms uh, analyze medical data like X-rays, MRIs, and CT scans, and uh, they try to identify different kinds of abnormalities which are later uh, used by the radiologist for diagnosing the um, uh, patient condition more effectively and uh, at the earliest possible. <clears throat> for example, Google's DeepMind uh, has developed an AI system that can detect over 50 eye diseases from retinal scans with uh, accuracy comparable to expert ophthalmologist. So it can identify more than 50 diseases um, all at uh, all very um, clearly, specifically, and uh, probably better than an export. Uh, another example can be in the form of the image segmentation, where AI performs different kind of image segmentation uh, and differentiate between healthy and the diseased tissue so that a better planning uh, for the disease treatment can be done. Uh, they, uh, an example has been uh, given as the AI tool like unit segment, which uh, which basically segments tumor boundaries in brain MRIs, providing crucial information for surgical planning. So these are some of the examples which are of artificial intelligence in terms of healthcare. But these are not limited. Uh, as far as medical diagnosis is concerned, AI basically is being used for uh, this as application uh, in particular to improve the accuracy and speed of the disease diagnosis as we um, always keep listening uh, to this particular thing that 
um, that early diagnosis can improve uh, the chances of survival of a patient or the patient outcome uh, can be really, uh, really improved if a disease can be identified at an early stage, specifically um, like cancer disease. So AI has been uh, sort of uh, helping uh, people out in identifying or diagnosing these diseases uh, using the different kinds of algorithm based on the different kinds of data uh, which are available um, uh, available with the healthcare professionals and uh, different algorithms uh, have been used not only for the diagnosis but also for the prediction of the diseases and for the um, identification of the diseases as well. Similarly, AI is utilized in uh, in mental um, health as well for the uh, same use cases it can be used so because it can analyze the data related to different uh, mood patterns the behavioral data can be identified and then depending upon that data um, identification analysis a treatment plan can be based on the same and uh, other than that obviously there are different kinds of chatbots available where people can talk to these chatbots or uh, the whatever the social stigma is related to these mental health issues can be avoided because in that case people are not much are not too bothered about um, uh, about uh, with whom they are talking to they can very confidently talk to these chatbots and try to find out the solutions of their problems and uh, sometimes probably this can work better than uh, better than talking to somebody in particular in, in person, um, uh, there is a possibility. So that is also uh, another example where people have been utilizing these applications of late. Another thing is uh, AI can be utilized in uh, personalized medicines because uh, once you have the patient history and you have the uh, genetic profiling of a patient, uh, depending upon the genetic profiling of the patient, doctor identifies the specific disease or the disease markers. And then on the basis of that, uh, he uh, basically plans the, um, the treatment of the patient and uh, so that his uh, therapy can be optimized. And finally, uh, the, 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 there can be minimal side effects. So, and a personalized medicine uh, can be planned for an individual and AI certainly uh, aids in these uh, treatment plans. Likewise, for the drug discovery, AI can be used because uh, drug, drug efficacy can be predicted easily by, the, uh, by AI and uh, it can also help in identifying the potential targets in uh, new therapies. So, this application is also quite important uh, in terms of the healthcare system. New drugs can be identified on the basis of the same. Likewise, AI is utilized in radiology as well because radiology deals with a lot of scans. So since it deals with a lot of scans, uh, so these scans can be um, can be feed into the uh, the system and the different AI algorithms can predict the uh, disease or sometimes even which uh, which uh, which particular um, treatment plant my treatment plan might be better um, over the other can also be planned uh, on the basis of these uh, artificial intelligence related uh, applications uh, surgery robotic surgeries you all of you might have heard by now uh, can be uh, done. It is now possible in uh, some specific particular hospitals. Uh, likewise, nano robots have been utilized for delivering the drug uh, to the specific target cells. Uh, that is also another artificial intelligence based uh, uh, based um, example uh, which is utilized in the healthcare systems. So artificial intelligence basically is revolutionizing this whole world of uh, world uh, by giving better treatment plans, by better uh, diagnostic measure, by giving better diagnostic measures, by uh, sort of giving the uh, giving the aid to the already existing healthcare system. Uh, likewise, it can also uh, 
be uh, it can also be uh, utilized for the um, for the different kinds of uh, for uh, some other different kinds of uh, applications also for example you can utilize it for the management of medical records uh, robot assisted surgery i've already mentioned to you it can be also utilized to detect the fraud detection and then uh, customer service based chatbots are already there which i've just mentioned to you virtual health assistants are there and then um, accurate cancer diagnosis, improved healthcare access. So there are different kinds of applications which are already available. So artificial intelligence is used to describe the machines that mimic the cognitive functions that humans associate with other humans, human minds. There are a few uh, spelling mistakes, uh, but anyhow. So the, uh, basically artificial intelligence is utilized to describe those machines which more or less mimic the cognitive functions of the human mind and then they try to solve the problem uh, by, and they try to learn the problem and give the solution for them. Uh, same. So artificial intelligence and nano, nanotherapeutics go hand in hand <clears throat> and they have a potential to transform the healthcare system. So one uh, more example can be of the prediction of the drug potency. AI algorithm can be utilized because uh, they can analyze vast data sets of molecular structures, experimental results, and clinical trials to predict the effectiveness of drug candidates, uh, accelerating drug discovery and development. So these uh, these uh, kind of uh, studies which utilize in silico drug screening, in situ drug screening, and Finally, reaching to the nanotheranostics for monitoring drug release, dosing, and efficacy can also be um, aided using artificial intelligence. Uh, another example is that they can be utilized for the microscopic analysis, where different kinds of images come from microscopes, then uh, different uh, kind of patterns and features can be identified which are usually, which might usually be missed by the human eye. And then they can lead to the characterization and optimization of nanomaterials and the, uh, which can further be utilized by the nanotherapeutics. Uh, this example I have already shared with all of you already, personalized medicine in which AI can analyze the patient data, <clears throat> including its genetic information and medical history. Uh, so that it can, so that they can identify the personalized treatment plan for the targeted delivery of nanotherapeutics. So nanotechnology basically is helping in the not only diagnosis but the treatment selection and the personalized medicine and obviously in the follow up of the disease. So this is a synergistic approach in which the um, artificial intelligence and nanotherapeutics have been helping each other for the best, better patient outcome. One example, very recent example, is of uh, this uh, particular uh, kind, which is of a smart bracelet. As you might already know that epilepsy is the fourth most common neurological disorder in the world. So um, identifying the scissors uh, on time or predicting the scissors before time is extremely important. So this AI-driven band, which is a br smart bracelet kind of band, uh, embraced too. It is uh, being uh, utilized for now the detection of the possible convulsing scissors. And this is a AI-driven band, which uses the algorithm to detect the possible convulsive scissors. So such products have been coming up in the market. Uh, now another example is of the this app, which uses the which basically identifies the stroke uh, it also uses the deep learning algorithms and it automatically detects a stroke on ct imaging as soon as you feed in a ct image it will immediately um, tell you whether uh, whether this image is of a patient who has just had a stroke or not or who had the uh, i mean even going before to the to discuss it with the medical professional you already know that um, that uh, the patient already had a stroke. This is another important uh, application which is already uh, in the market now. One very important and interesting example is of the vocal biomarkers. 
basically ai is able to help in diagnosis through the sound of the voice of patients specifically uh, for example in the patients like of alzheimers and parkinsons disease where a uh, patient might be having a little difficulty in speaking or um, they their their speech is little altered so these vocal biomarkers in the form of their uh, altered speech uh, can be utilized uh, from the phone records to analyze the risk of alzheimers or the parkinsons disease and these algorithms are developed to detect uh, and, and uh, in addition to that some algorithms have been detected to uh, developed to detect the covid-19 vaccine covid-19 virus uh, even by just coming into the smartphone apps and uh, um, that could uh, detect the uh, covid-19 virus so very nice and very uh, innovative kind of applications people have been utilizing uh, for uh, various applications uh, which are utilizing artificial intelligence uh, algorithms for identifying, diagnosing, treating uh, the uh, patients uh, and advancing the healthcare systems. Uh, another example is of the detecting arrhythmias. Arrhythmia, you, are, you might know that it is a it is also known as cardiac arrhythmia. And it is basically an irregular heartbeat that can cause uh, your heart to beat either too fast or too slow or with an irregular rhythm. And it uh, hence increases the risk of stroke or heart failure and other heart-related complications. So this AI application, which is a medical-grade ECG recorder, that is electrocardiograph recorder, it is already FDA-approved, over-the-counter use scale, uh, available for the over-the-counter use. It creates, analyzes, and displays electrocardiograph data and can provide information for identifying cardiac arrhythmias. So you can just have it in the form of the wristband and uh, get your electrocardiogram data and identify the, um, the uh, cardiac arrhythmias on your own as well. Uh, this, is, this is also in the market. Now, another application is of the Nano QSAR. Uh, which is quantity structure related activity relationship models these models are when combined with ai can assess the toxicological effects of nanoparticles uh, so they by uh, by predicting toxicity ai can help uh, uh, in designing safer nanomedicines before even clinical trials begin so a model called uh, nano qsar it helps in uh, evaluating potential toxicities and safety concerns for different nanomaterials and it aids in regulatory approval. So it collects the data, uh, train the algorithm, and then finally uh, is utilized for evaluating the cytotoxicity. Uh, in, uh, so all these uh, applications which I have talked about uh, uh, just now, in addition to that, there are some other applications also which can be utilized by these AI-powered nano, uh, AI powered, uh, nano uh, nanotherapeutic, so, sorry, uh, I mean, they are sort of AI-powered nano, nanotherapeutics only which are being utilized uh, in the healthcare systems. For example, they can be utilized for the molecular design. So AI algorithms can assist in the rational design of nanoparticles and optimal characteristics for drug delivery. You can identify which kind of nanoparticle do you need and what should be their properties. And then finally, you can design them for a specific kind of drug delivery uh, system. Likewise, you can have the predictive modeling. Predictive modeling uh, would have the AI-powered simulations, which can predict the behavior and performance of nanotherapeutics in complex biological systems. Then high throughput screen screening can be used, uh, which uh, AI-enabled platforms can accelerate the screening and evaluation of large libraries of nanomaterials. Uh, these these can be utilized for developing uh, some uh, new kind of material and also data driven optimization can be done using uh, machine learning learning algorithms because a vast data set set uh, is uh, a large was large data sets are available for the design and development of nanotherapeutics so uh, artificial intelligence can aid into all these kinds of applications 
Similarly, if you talk about the convergent roles, uh, the uh, roles of AI and nanotherapeutics. So, uh, not one example is given here, but then it can be it can be for uh, a lot number of diseases, uh, cancer diagnosis and tre treatment. AI powered image analysis can assist in early cancer diagnostics or detection. Uh, and then by nanotherapeutics can deliver chemotherapy drugs directly to tumor cells, improving treatment efficacy and reducing side effects. So if you know uh, that a patient has cancer and he is diagnosed early, he or she is diagnosed early, then nanotherapeutics can be delivered on time with better efficacy and better uh, specificity so that uh, side effects can be reduced and the patient outcomes can be better. Likewise, neurological disorders can be um, identified early or diagnosed early, depending upon the uh, AI-based applications. And finally, timely interventions can be done in terms of the uh, in terms of the um, uh, treatment plans. Uh, also, uh, one example had recently been of COVID-19, where nanotherapeutics have been uh, used for the rapid diagnostic te tests, where uh, if we talk about even the uh, vaccination, which were developed by Pfizer and Moderna, so those uh, vaccines were uh, mRNA vaccines, and they, they had lipid, lipid uh, nanoparticles as their shell, uh, they were encapsulated in lipid, lipid nanoparticles so that they can they can go inside the cell and uh, would not uh, would not be caught by the uh, mRNA degrading enzymes and also since they are negatively charged and the cell membrane is also uh, negatively charged so lipid nanoparticles were needed as a core so that they can go inside the cell uh, easily. So these these were the recent examples, and uh, vac vaccination uh, have been for COVID nineteen vaccination. Uh, these have already been used. Similarly, nanotherapeutics for advancing these systems can be utilized for better diagnosis of these infectious diseases and for delivering antiviral or antibacterial drugs. Uh, anti antibacterial agents it can be utilized. You know. But uh, in addition to uh, these, there are uh, a lot of challenges uh, in using AI and nanotherapeutics into integration. Uh, the most important challenge is of the data privacy and security, because the AI requires large data sets. And obviously, that data set comes from the patient history uh, and the patient uh, data because patient gives its data in the form of um, demography, biochemical data, and then clinical data. Uh, there are lots of data which is collected so that uh, the, the privacy and security of that data is one of the major, major concern that how to go about it. And then there are uh, second concern is of the regulatory hurdles because taking approval um, of utilizing nanotherapeutics and AI driven healthcare technology is quite complex and time consuming because it is a very recent field. So still a lot of uh, hurdles are coming up in uh, in uh, taking the um, approval or maybe even the, even the formulating the approval policies. So that is another important challenge uh, in terms of uh, uh, using these uh, integration of AI and nanotherapeutics. Then there is third challenge, which is transparency and explainability, because AI algorithms can be complex and difficult to understand. So obviously they raise the concern about transparency and explainability of decisions that how exactly the, the machine is taking a decision, whether it is correct or not, how, correct, how much a percentage of it is correct, what is the precision, how much is the precision, how much is the accuracy. So all these concerns are obviously there. And then last but not the least are the ethical considerations. Because AI, which is used in healthcare, it uses, it uh, raises these concerns as well because uh, they are related to the bias or the fairness or the potential of its misuse. Uh, so uh, these ethical considerations are also uh, there, but uh, but uh, but we assume that 
uh, sooner or later since these technologies are helping the humankind as a whole and uh, are really needed for the betterment of patient outcomes so they uh, they will have these uh, challenges would be overcome by the uh, by the healthcare uh, system professionals or people who are working in these fields so the future of nano medicine in healthcare is a combination of all these that you would need AI or ML guided formulations and they will be developed uh, using different drug discovery processes and the uh, different kinds of methods uh, which are there already being utilized by the, uh, not only by the research scientists as in their own personal labs, but by pharmaceutical industries also as a whole. And then the standards and protocols for purity and reproducibility uh, would be would be made uh, so that things can be reproduced easily if anybody wants to. And then there would be uh, good manufacturing pra practices. There should be good manufacturing practices for scalability because usually when they're made in lab, they're, they're made in very small quantities, but later they need to be scaled up. So, so that these can further be utilized by tackling with the infectious diseases like COVID-19 or the chronic lethal conditions like cancer. So this is what is the future of nanomedicine going to be, that um, artificial intelligence and nanomedicine should go hand in hand and they should be utilized for the, uh, for the benefit of the patients as a whole so that more and more people get benefited uh, we uh, we are able to save a more number of lives so that because we should be able to diagnose early we should be able to treat better and then also another uh, another concern can be of cost so we need to take care of the cost as well it has to be uh, minimal uh, so that everybody can afford it so all these uh, things need to be taken care of so i hope in due course of time uh, uh, the situation will get better and better and nanomedicine and artificial intelligence will uh, certainly provide uh, hope to the uh, hope to the patients and uh, their caregivers thank you